Will you pray with me? Father, this day we thank you for you have called us together to be your church in this place. And it's by the Holy Spirit that we have been gathered. And so, Lord, we pray now by that same Holy Spirit you might help us and that you might guide us. Lord, we pray this day that you might open all of our ears, that you might open our hearts. Make us ready to receive what you have prepared for us on this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So have you figured out what the word of the day is today? Hmm? Hosanna. Yes, I see, I see your eyes up there. We're doing... So the, the word of the day this day is Hosanna. I think you're behind me a little bit, video. Might turn the video off this week. We'll try it again another time. The word of the week is Hosanna. Hosanna. We sang it, we heard it, and it's a word that shows up in only particular places in the Bible. In fact, the word Hosanna is the English translation of a Greek word that is itself a translation of a Hebrew word. And I'm not going to try to pronounce the Hebrew word because I will butcher it horribly. But if you went and looked, it would be transliterated into English as something very similar to what we say, Hosanna. And it shows up only one place in the whole Bible. It's why we read Psalm 118 in our worship service every Palm Sunday. That part in that responsive reading when you said, save us, Lord, save us, that is the Hebrew word, Hosanna, or that we translate into English as Hosanna. It is a cry for help. It is a cry that, Lord, help us in the midst of our struggle. And it shows up only in that one place. And the interesting thing about that word is it seems out of place in the story that we are telling this morning. This morning we are telling this story about how Jesus came in and everyone was shouting with joy and victory. They were waving their palm branches, the branch that you would wave when a victorious general came back from his military campaigns. They were shouting in joy and happiness, Hosanna. But in the Old Testament, in Psalm 118, it's a cry for help. Help us. What's going on? Are they saying the wrong thing? Are they confused about what they should be yelling out in that time? Of course not. Even before Jesus had come, the Jewish people had understood, had, had come to translate that very cry for help into a cry, a cheer of celebration. They had come to use that very phrase, Hosanna, not as a desperate pre plea, but as a joyful declaration that their God was there. They had come to, God had turned that plea into hope. Faith does that for us. When we have faith in God, he turns our help into a hooray. He turns our desperation into celebration. He turns our cries for help and salvation into a cheer that salvation has already come. And so this day when we shout Hosanna, we use those very words that in one way we might have once thought as a, a crying out for help as a cry of celebration because help has come and God is here with us. Amen? Amen. Yeah. You know, we do this in the church a lot. We do this in faith a lot. There, there are a lot of words that change their meaning as you are a person of faith, as we walk with God in faith. There are words that we use, and we mean something different from what other people mean with them. This happens in, in sort of non-religious settings all the time. You know, the word terrific, when we say that's terrific, back in the day when that word was first used a lot, it was, it was a bad, it was a negative word. The word terrific comes from the word terror. But somewhere along the way, we have translated it into a word of joy. Well, the church does this too. The church takes these words that the world uses in one way and we use it in another. 
You know a lot of these, right? Love. The world uses love in so many ways and talks about it in so many ways. I love my new pickup truck, right? We talk about love and we mean things that are really more about I, I, I love something because it's good for me, right? I get something out of it. But the Bible tells us, Jesus told us, this is how we know what love is, that Jesus gave himself up for us. And so when Christians say the word love, we mean something very different very often than what the world means. When we talk about death, the world sees death as the worst possible thing that could ever happen to a person. The world sees death as an as a iron stop to everything in your existence from which there is nothing to hope. And yet we see death as just a moment. We see death as something that's already been defeated. We see death as a transition into eternity, something that death has no power over. And so when we speak of death, we mean something different than other people mean. When we speak of hope, we mean something different than other people mean. People talk of hope all the time. You know, I hope when I go home, mom has made my favorite food, right? I, I hope that these people who are helping me know what they're doing. I hope the IRS doesn't find out what I reported on my taxes. Yeah, notice who laughed. When we speak of hope, we speak of hope as in my hope is in God. And so therefore, I don't have to worry. We speak of hope as something that we stand firmly on because we hope in the one who has come to save us. We hope in the one whose promises are always true. We hope in the one who never leaves us. So when we say hope, we mean something different. And when we say salvation, we do as well. You know, that day, some of those crowds who were cheering and they were waving their palm branches, they were hoping that Jesus would come in and that he would drive the Roman army out. They were hoping for a new political order to come into place. And often in this troubled world in which we live, we do that too. We, we hope for salvation in terms of worldly power and worldly might. But Jesus came to show us a different salvation. He came to show us a salvation from fear and shame and guilt. He came to help show us a salvation from our own selfishness and our own self-hatred. He came to show us a salvation from the powers of sin inside us that make us do things we don't want to do and regret things that we have done. He has come to show us a salvation that overcomes the differences that divide us one from another. When Jesus talks about salvation, he means something different than we often do. And so this day we hope and this day we cheer, for salvation has come. So what's that look like? You know, there's a lot of different ways that we can think of that and that it can be described to us. Salvation doesn't always mean that we get better. Salvation doesn't always mean that our struggle gets easier. Salvation means that in the midst of that we find strength and that we discover that hope and that we know that there is life beyond this one. Early in my ministry, there was a guy at a little church I served in Greene County. We called him Big Jim because his son was Little Jim. And Big Jim was a big personality. Uh, if, if this were the sanctuary, he sat right about where a little bit of row behind Lisa there. And he, you'd always knew when he was in because he was loud and boisterous and friendly and knew everyone and always had a story every Sunday morning about what he'd done and what he'd seen. And I remember, too, always when we do prayers of the people, Jim would always pray, ask and insist that we pray for children who had suffered abuse. I, I never really knew what exactly caused him to insist on that every Sunday, but every Sunday he asked for it. Well, Jim one day woke up 
And he was going about his day, and in the middle course of his day, suddenly his back broke. He had bone cancer that he didn't know about, and it was really advanced. And the bones had just shattered from the growth of the cancer. And he went into the hospital, and I went and visited him there. And while we were visiting, he looked at me one day, when it was getting pretty clear that the end was close, and he asked me, you think I'm okay with Jesus? And I had to say, Jim, I can't tell you that. That's something you and he have to work out. And he was clearly troubled. And he was clearly anxious about that. And so we prayed together over that. And I came back the next day to see him. And when I came in to see him, he was smiling. And he smiled up at me and he said, Pastor, Jesus and I had a good talk last night and we're good and I'm good and I'm ready to go. Salvation that day came to that hospital room. When we say salvation, we mean something different than the world means. And there are a lot of people, there are a lot of people who are crying out for help right now. There are a lot of people who are crying out for that Hosanna in the original sense, help me. And some of those cries look kind of rough to deal with because some of those cries for help show up in people's lives as anger and as thrashing out at other people. Some of those cries for help show up in people's life as addiction and as abusiveness. Some of those cries for help show up in people's lives as self-destructive behavior. And it can be hard to know what to do or how to help. And if I had all the answers, I'd give them to you in a second. But here's what I believe. I believe, good people of God, our first way of helping is to ourselves be a people who believe that salvation has come. Our first way of helping is to be people who can shout Hosanna in the midst of life's struggles and challenges, who can say, Hosanna, the Lord has come in the midst of our own trials because we know our hope is in more than what we can see. And so I wonder if you might be a people who can shout Hosanna with me. I wonder if we think about, as we've prayed for Jeff and his cancer and the cancer in our community, of the other illnesses in our community, the people who are struggling with heart disease and their bodies failing, and they are crying out and looking for help. Can we be a people who say Hosanna? Can you say it with me? Hosanna! When we look at a world divided politically and divided by class and divided by race, families split apart by politics these days, when we see a world where everyone sees the worst in other people, can we be a people, will you say it with me this day, Hosanna, when we struggle, when we see people trapped in addictions, when we pe see people struggling with things they can't overcome on their own, when we see the world torn apart by powers that seem too strong for us to overcome, will you say it with me, Hosanna, for salvation has come, and faith in Jesus Christ turns our cry for help into a hooray. One more time, Hosanna, let us pray. Father, we are the ones who need to have you help us. Not just to raise our arms pleading for help, but to wave our palms in celebration for Jesus Christ has come. And so, let, Lord, let the Hosanna ring forth from our very soul. Let us this day declare that we know where our hope comes from and that we know that salvation has come to us and so we say with all the church, Hosanna this day, salvation has come. And Lord, when we struggle, when those words get caught in our throat, God, give us the Holy Spirit to trust and believe in the things we declare. Hosanna this day. May it be so. 
Amen. So this morning, as we prepare to go, I want you to hold on to that Hosanna. But I know some of you won't be able to join us for the services this week. Some of you won't be able to join us on, Wednesday, on Thursday night when we remember the Last Supper, when Jesus gave himself up for us. Some of you won't be able to join us on Good Friday when we remember how he suffered and died for us. And so this, today I want to end our service as we prepare to go out into the world by remembering what happens between Palm Sunday and Easter. We celebrate today because what Jesus has done for us. We will celebrate on Easter because what God has done for us. And yet let us remember what he did on the cross. And so this morning as we prepare to go, I invite you to carry with you that song that we will sing. And perhaps this day as we sing, you might need to come forward and pray. Pray that God will give you the ability, like the children in the songs we've sung, to say Hosanna even in your struggles. Prayer that you might be able to come to the foot of the cross and receive there the forgiveness that Jesus has poured out. Or, say, or sing from your seats and remember the love of Jesus Christ that was redeemed, that was shown on Easter, but that poured out on the cross. Won't you please rise as you are able? And let us sing, Were You There?